The Star Wars franchise has been around for 47 years. The epic space opera franchise began way back in 1977, courtesy of George Lucas. 47 years is a long time, and going through all those years, across multiple decades, well, that has led to many generations of fans. We've seen the franchise go across multiple media platforms, movies, shows, comics, novels, toys, and so on. Despite being popular across the globe, there's been a lot of bad blood amongst the fan base, and there's been a lot of frustration and drama, well, since most of it beginning in 1999 with the release of Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Fans were very critical of the prequel trilogy, and George Lucas has voiced his frustrations about the fan base on a few occasions. He has tried to remind us on numerous occasions that he made this franchise for kids. He's even brought this up recently while in the midst of Disney's reign over the franchise. Some some people were not a fan of him basically standing up for Disney, and I'm usually of the opinion that whatever George says goes. He's the mastermind behind all of this, so why would I disagree with what he has created? But I am starting to disagree with him on one thing, and it's the whole Star Wars is for kids. I don't doubt that George had the intention to make this a kids thing, but let's be honest. How many of these themes and scenarios in this franchise are really for kids? And it's not just the violent scenes or themes like the Empire literally being the Star Wars version of the Nazis. It's literally about how complex the story is and how complicated it can get when trying to interpret everything happening in these movies and shows. And then, yeah, you can point to, you know, Anakin being burned to a crisp and having one limb left in Episode 3. George, Disney, and even the Star Wars Defenders need to understand that there's many generations of Star Wars fans today that are much older now. I'd wager that most Star Wars fans are at least 20 years old and up from there. If you were to add everything up, that is the assumption I would bet on. So this is what I want to analyze today. Is Star Wars really just for kids? Or is it fair for us older fans to expect some content created with us older fans in mind? It sucks to see the fandom in such a bad spot, but it's also understandable to a degree. A lot of the older fans, including myself, have been frustrated with a lot of the content that has come out during the Disney Star Wars era. I'm not going to go through yet again why people are upset with things like the sequel movies, issues with the Book of Boba and the Kenobi show, because I've done that a million times on this channel and I'm, I'm getting tired of it, honestly. But I have to acknowledge that older fans are upset that they took these existing characters and stories and started messing with with everything. They tainted the legacies of these characters and the Star Wars lore as a whole. It's gotten to the point that I'd rather Disney just focus on new stories and characters because they could just make their own things and we don't run the risk of them messing up stuff that is already loved and appreciated. And I've always found it interesting that people claim on many occasions that Star Wars is for kids. Are the stories and characters really all geared for kids only? Or is it just intended for kids from a business standpoint? For Disney, they of course want to bring in young fans for toys and merch and, you know, make a lot of money off of that stuff and of course hook these people as fans for life. Star Wars has evolved a lot over the years, movie making technology has helped a lot, and there's drastic differences between the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy. You know, the prequels definitely have more intense scenes, but it's not like there wasn't anything significant, especially violence, in the originals. We saw limbs cut off. There was a time where Luke and Han had the hots for Leia, and then later we find out, oh, Luke and Leia are sisters. That's made for kids in mind? George Lucas, like I mentioned earlier, based the Empire off of the Nazis during World War II. The story is pretty complex for a 10-year-old to understand, and I remember watching the originals when I was like 7 or 8 years old, and I was obsessed with these movies. I fell in love with them instantly and watched them a thousand times. But did I truly understand the complexity of Episode 6's story? I didn't understand Luke's struggle with choosing the light over the dark. And then you had the lore of Star Wars expand a lot over the decades after the first three movies. There's so much more lore in the books and comics, and yeah, there's a lot of passionate nerds out there that have consumed every bit of Star Wars content out there. And I'll be honest, I do think the prequel trilogy gets hated on a little too much. I'll be the first to tell you that, yeah, Hayden and Natalie Portman, they had some cringy romance scenes in episode two and three. I wouldn't say they were really great. There's some dialogue that's just eh, and the first half of episodes one and two, in my opinion, for me personally, are boring. 
It's good for telling the origin story of these characters and the overall story of Star Wars, but I personally find myself enjoying the last 45 minutes of both of those movies more than any other part. But I still think they are good movies. George got fed up with fans during the prequels due to some ridiculous outrage. You know, Jake Lloyd was attacked for his performance as a young Anakin Skywalker, and Ahmed Best was also bullied by many for playing Jar Jar Binks. And, you know, everybody has the right to have a critical opinion when giving some sort of review or analytical take on the movies and the stories. But that kind of outrage to where both of these people have struggled with mental health and, and things since then, uh, that's ridiculous. And again, we should appreciate the creativity of George Lucas and not sit here and roast him all the time, even if you do dislike something that he came up with. And I'll pull a couple of quotes from George here on all of this criticism from characters and other decisions he's made and how he's gone about doing his thing in the first two trilogies. Now, it seemed that he had a strategy for adding childhood elements to his complex storylines with characters like Jar Jar, C-3PO, and even the Ewoks. George has stated in his interviews that he has gotten irritated on multiple occasions, but he stands by his work and he continued to build these stories with what he had in mind and was not influenced by the audience. And that's cool. It's his baby, so he could do what he wants with it. I just wish that George and others would recognize that today, at this present time, there's a lot of older fans. A large chunk of the fan base is mature. I don't think Disney should be afraid to bring in the Game of Thrones writers and let them make a more adult-like show. It's amazing how a show like Clone Wars, an animated show, again, intended for kids, brought adult audiences to tears, especially with that final season. Like, if the writers can make adults love animated shows like Clone Wars, Rebels, and Tales of the Jedi, then why can't we get a live-action show like this? And, you know, I have my complaints about Andor, as I personally think it's overrated in some regards. I do have a video on that. You could go check it out after this if you want. But it is written for a mature audience, and I do like that. I enjoy that a lot. I would like to see more kind of storytelling from Andor incorporated into other projects. Just add more Star Wars lore elements to it. There are plenty of scenes in Star Wars that can be tough for young audiences to watch. There's quite a few scenes in the prequels that can push the limits for kids in my opinion. Anakin literally slaughters an entire group of people, the Tuscans. Then Anakin is burned to a crisp and loses most of his limbs. We also saw the burnt skeletal remains of Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru in the original trilogy. We see Anakin ignite his lightsaber, which insinuates that he's going to kill a bunch of young Jedi children in the Jedi Council Chambers. And then, of course, Order 66, where we're seeing a lot of Jedi get slaughtered, and they're getting, I mean, we see a couple of these Jedi, they're getting just absolutely pelted with a ton of blaster fire. Like, it's it's intense. It really is. General Grievous had a pretty violent death, catching fire and literally having his internal organs explode, Palpatine's deformation due to his own lightning, Count Dooku being beheaded, Darth Maul cut in half. You know, Star Wars has towed the line between PG-13 and R-rated scenes quite a few times. I'm not making this video today to say that Star Wars needs to be R-rated and there's nothing in here for kids anymore, but I just would like to see Disney spread out the content a bit. They will obviously make shows for kids, and there will be a steady stream of animated shows, but can we get some more intense live action? Can we get a show that is just as good as Game of Thrones or like Andor to a degree? No, we don't need X-rated sex scenes, but I want a complex story that anyone 20 years or older would appreciate and understand. I don't want to see shows like The Mandalorian get dumbed down because Grogu has to come back and because we think it's fun and cute to inject Lizzo and Jack Black into a story that has no business including them. You'd think a company like Disney would have the interest in doing this because they have all the resources and manpower for it. But they've come out numerous times recently and said that they have to change things because it has become too costly. And also, I'd like to see more bad guy stuff. Like with this Tales of the Empire that they announced that's coming out soon, that's awesome. And there's more that we should do. Let's bring some of the well-known Sith from books and comics to the big screen. Let's not be afraid to keep a show intense and dark. Ubisoft is coming out with their Star Wars Outlaws game later this year. The game looks cool. I'm, I'm going to play it. I'm excited that we're getting a Star Wars game. And the premise of it seems cool. You're supposed to play as an outlaw scoundrel in the Outer Rim. But my question is, will you actually be a criminal? Will you actually have the ability to make decisions to do bad things that lead to consequences later on? Or is this going to be the typical story where you start off bad and then you become good? And I'm getting some of those vibes of the latter so far. 
I try to be patient with Star Wars and give everything a chance, but I have noticed lately that I am not as excited as I used to be with both Star Wars and Marvel, and it hit me first with Marvel where I'm not staying up to date with the shows like I used to, and I just haven't been excited and invested. Like right now, I haven't been 100% invested in the third and final season of Bad Batch. I'm watching it every week. You know, I, I can't wait to see how this ends, and you know, I, I'm a little bit worried that characters are gonna, you know, die or it's gonna be an emotional ending. But to me, there's been a lot of watered down storytelling in the last two seasons of this show and just ultimately in Star Wars storytelling today. And I think that has led to not only my fatigue, but to the fatigue of many others as well. And it's always annoyed me to see so many fans quit Star Wars because of not liking a few things or for calling everything woke. Disney Star Wars has not been ideal. I get it. But if those in power would actually pay attention to the demographics and the feedback, then they would realize that people really do care about Star Wars. And it's just that they don't care for a lot of what they are making. And hey, if they need inspiration, well look at the novels and the comics. There's some great examples and source material over there. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Star Wars today, and I do enjoy breaking down things like this. It's fun, but it's also sad at the same time. I am curious to hear your thoughts as well, so leave a comment down below. If you're new here, hey, welcome. Thanks for checking out the video. I hope you check out more on the channel. Consider subscribing. You can also find the audio versions of my content on podcasting platforms like Spotify. Just Google Analyze This and look for that logo. You can also find me on X and TikTok, X at Analyze This underscore YT, and TikTok at analyze this 54 underscore YT. Thanks again and take care.